Hello, fellow managers. This is Quez World TV coming back at you with another tutorial video. Um, we're going to do something different this time. Uh, my previous videos was uh, regarding Stratomatic basketball. And um, I think I may have said on one of the videos that I play baseball a lot of Stratomatic. Um, and I, I was getting into a game uh, today... And I said, you know what? Why not take a why not why not take a uh, a video of uh, an inning, or maybe two innings uh, of some play? Uh, how I play? Um, I do uh, super advanced with a uh, couple of added rules, um, and um, I have gotten you know various different people uh, that I speak to on a regular basis that uh, do play a lot of basic. Uh, play some advanced but not as technical as I get um, I, I do get into really in depth uh, with the rule set that I have come out with uh, throughout the years um, just to give you some background um, I, I live in New York um, and where I live and the area that I do live in unfortunately there are well Fortunately, there are players that do play. There are other managers that play, but they don't play my my to my level of rule set that I that I that I brought out. Um, to give some more information on that, my rule set basically is basically stratomatic official rules. You know, ground balls, uh, fly balls, line outs, things like that. Um, I, I basically use all their rules and I have added, you know, a couple of different things. For example, I changed around the the way starters and reliefs uh, relief pitchers are used um, based on how you're 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 handling fatigue. Um, I added, uh, you know, line out max with uh, two men on with nobody out. I added just, you know, when that occurs and at that particular situation comes up. I just roll a 20-sided die and I give 10% where a one or a two rolled on a 20-sided die is then is a triple play. So it's not just automatic. I still roll to get one or two. And then if it happens, then it's jot down as a triple play. Um, what else do I have? Um, I don't use the closer rule. Um, uh, other than that, I, 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 I have used Stratomatic's, uh, advanced charts where I, I carry this book of mine and I, I have very different charts that in rules, these old rules that I have, but I, I came out with charts that I liked to put, you know, easy access within a book rather than having to bring out the papers that came with strat this is all stratomatic i take no uh, uh i take no um um uh, credit for this this is stratomatic stratomatic made all of this i love the company um i speak to them on a regular basis um and this is all them I take no credit for it. Um, I, I never produced anything more or selling it or anything like that. This is my own personal thing. Uh, this is their information. I just happen just to copy it and put it on a piece of paper and I have it in a book for easy access for me. This is not for everybody. Um, how else I play is I also use to take down the score. I use iScore as well as I open up my beautiful wooden case where I, I roll my 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 dice um and uh let's get into it um i am playing the 2000 cardinals versus the 11 yankees we are currently in the bottom second with the yankees up they are up 4-1 russell morin as you can see is up to bat and that is the defense currently on how uh, St. Louis is set up. We have uh, Daryl Kyle pitching for St. Louis. He is actually now losing by 3-4-1 four, four, in the second inning. And the Yankees are pitching Sabathia. So right now, I have it set up here uh, with Kyle pitching. Russell Marnin is up. And let's get into some play. So basically... These are all stratomatic rules, super advanced. 
You roll three die for the at-bat. I roll. I rolled a 2-10. 2-10 versus a righty on Martin is a walk. One, two, three. So on I score, I hit play. I go to walk. And it puts it on first base with Brett Gardner at the plate. So how I do it is Martin is on second. I mean on first base. I take the next card and I lay him like this where Russell Martin is on first base. Brett Gardner's at the at the plate. I don't, of course, need to. And I'm pretty sure everybody plays like this. You don't need this information here. I cover it, so then I have just the top portion of what I need to see. So we have no outs. Daryl Kyle is uh, pitching. He's a minus two hold. We got Brett Gardner. We use the advanced steal rating here. This means, of course, for some of you super advanced players, for him to get a good lead to use the first number in parentheses for running to steal, I have to roll a six on two six-sided die. But that 1 to 18 for the first column as a good lead, right? There are things that you have to take off. Hold minus 2. You have to come over to the catcher's card for St. Louis. He's a minus 3 arm. So minus 3 with the minus 2 is a minus 5. As we know, arm and hold cannot exceed one to five, a minus 5 or plus 5 in between. So that is automatically going to be a minus five on the one to nine, on the one to eighteen, bringing it down to a one to thirteen. But the asterisk I play and is he's being held automatically on base. So that is a hold is a minus two. So basically, it's minus five minus two is minus seven. That is one to eleven. If I was to roll for a good lead, Yankees are up. I can take a chance because I have a, the Yankees have a little bit of a cushion, but I'm not going to do that. I have Brett Garner up. He was he was decent in 2011. He was okay, but his bunting is an A. So before I'm even rolling for anything, whether it's steal, bunting, hitting, or anything, the defense has to decide what they're doing position-wise. In, in my set of rules, even though that asterisk says that he's holding, I actually can take him off of hold. I can say, you know what? St. Louis is not holding Brett Garner. But by doing so, Brett Garner now gets an automatic good lead, 1-11 to 11, to go to first base. I mean, go to second base. If I keep him a hold, then I have to roll to see if they get a good lead or not. So you got to make decisions here. With that said, he's an A. Defensive, defensive, we're up by, uh, Yankees are up by three. Defensively, they're going to bring the corners in to bring down the bunt rating to a B. They're going to make a decision on the hold here, whether they're going to hold him or not. And I think, you know, in this case, they're trying to keep the guy from uh, being out of position defensively. If Brett Garner was to hit, it's more likely he's going to bunt than hit in this case, in my opinion. I know someone probably in the chat will say, oh, wait a second. Hey, why didn't you swing away? I'm just making a decision here based on what I feel is necessary for this position. Everybody manages differently. Feel free to comment and say that, hey, give me another option and, a, and the reason, I'll listen to it, and maybe that changes how I manage. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to have St. Louis not hold Russell. It's going to be 1-11 to 11 if I decide to automatically send them. And I'm going to have, because the, uh, the, the corners are in, it's still a bunting B. Russell Martin has decent running. His hit and run actually goes up to a B because the, uh, the corners in. Brings it up to a B from a C. I'm going to just bunt in this particular situation with no outs being up by three. And I know that's a lot of information, guys. Again, I'm talking it all out loud. I probably would have thought of this in 15 seconds. Um, this is just to show you the different things that I'm thinking about and a lot of people think about and the way they play. So now I'm going to roll. Now, with in super advanced rules... 
and this is a this is a um, um, a stratomatic roll. You roll all four die. This is for the at bat. This is for possible balk, pass ball, or wild pitch. So I'm going to roll. We're bunting. I in my league. Anytime a ball is thrown home, you know, to for a pitch, I always with a man on uh, base. I always roll this because you, even though the guy's bunting, you the guy can throw it away. It could be a pass ball. It could be a wild pitch. So the rules are: if it's a one or a two under twenty, it's then it would be a possible wild pitch, a pass ball, a balk. I roll the fourteen. So with that said, that does not occur because I didn't roll a one or a two. So I go automatically to the three other dice, one column with five and three equals eight. So it's a one eight to look at on Brett on the, I'm sorry, on the uh, bunning chart. So I'm going to go to my bunning chart. And I'm sorry, I am talking fast. Um, if somebody has, you know, uh, um, you know, a serious question in the comments, I'll feel, I'll be more than happy to answer it on how I play. I'm not really going to pay attention to some of the guys that are going to really talk some smack in the comments. Um, you know, everybody jokes around. I do it all the time, too. Uh, but if you have a serious question, I, I can answer it based on how I play. So I made the charts up. I made different, different. I changed up a little bit of the chart here because I felt things were a little bit better. So I'm going to look at the bunny. I go and he's a B. I know there's other information here. I'm doing this quick, guys, because this is I. You know, I don't want to show. I don't want to be like, okay, this is this. This is not really to try to try to show how you know how everything comes together. He's bunning. He's a B in this case. He rolled an eight. An eight is going to be a sack automatically. Uh, the one would have been to the pitcher, uh, so it's a sack. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put it was an out. He sacrificed bunt, right? He rolled it to. I like. I like to uh, show where it hit. It's hit to. I'm sorry. I had to put the camera there. Where it's hit to. So in this case, it got hit to a pitcher. Let's just say he he bunted it right here. The pitcher, the pitcher went and grabbed it. I hit next, and now who who made the play? So it's pitcher, right? One to the first baseman, done, and now it's going to ask me and I score what happened to Russell Martin on first because of the play. He got advanced by the runner, and as you can see, he went from first to second, and now it's one out, Brett, I'm sorry, the, the, the camera, one out, as you can see there, uh, with, and it will tell you, Brett Garner lays down a sacrifice bunt to pitcher Darrell Kyle, uh, and he threw him out at first to Mark McGuire, Russell Martin, and there will be more information here once it. I go with the next batter. But he's now on second base. There's one out. Brett Garner is out. I now flip the card and I cover him. So I don't keep, I keep the batting order where it's supposed to be. Curtis Granderson is at the plate. Russell Marner is at second base with one out. What am I looking at? I'm looking at a steal possibility. When you're at second base, you use the second number for stealing. He's It would um, automatically be a one to six um, as a minimum. And then with all the different numbers, I'm not going to bunt. I mean, I'm not going to steal. He's a bunt C, which is not bad. But one out, man in scoring position, Curtis Granderson up. Uh, I'm not going to go. I'm just going to swing away here. And the defense would say at first, the defense would say, hey, um, we're, you know, they're, they're the position back. And then the batter would then decide, where, you know, if you're playing, you know, first against an actual real human being, the defense and my, and my rules, they, of course, well, anybody's rules, they would go and decide first. And then you would decide whether you want to swing away, bunt, and all that jazz. So getting back to what I was saying, when there's a man on, we're rolling the 20-sided die with the other three dice. I'm going to roll with swinging away. Man on second base. No hold. I rolled an eight. So there's no pass ball, no balk, no wild pitch. And I rolled the black column is two. And I rolled an eight. So it's two eight with no pass ball. I'm going to come over here to Curtis Granison. We're going against a righty pitcher. Two eight is a strikeout. 
I come over to I score. I hit, it's an out. Whenever, how I do it, anytime it's a strikeout on the batter's card, I'm, and I got this from a lot of people who do it throughout the years. If it's on the batter's card, it's a swinging strikeout. If it's on the pitcher's card, he caught him looking. So in this case, I would say struck out swinging. What happened to Curtis Martin? Well, he didn't go anywhere, so he held up on, on the strikeout. Now you got two outs. As you can see here, it says Curtis Grandin strikes out, and Russell Martin is still on second base, okay? Derek Jeter is now up. I take him. I cover Curtis because he made out. Russell's still at second with two out. Now this is where clutch hits and clutch outs. I play the omega symbols, right? All these omega symbols, they change to outs uh, with a man on scoring position. So... We got two outs here, and I just wanted to show you some other stuff. Derek Jeter, his first at bat, he was 0 for 1, uh, but it was an error. And this is where the error happened. It was on Jim Emmons, and it got hit into the outfield, and Jim Emmons uh, bobbled it, whatever he did. And uh, so right now, two outs, like I said, bottom second, score is 4 1. There's two outs. I'm not, you can't, I don't, we can't bunt with two outs, right? Well, I use this, of course, the Stratomatic rule. There's a man on for, uh, on base, so I got to roll all the dice. Derek's up. They're not walking him it with first base open. Derek G is rolling. You go over here. I roll the 14, right? 14, there's no pass ball, wild pitch or balk. So it's the three column, four. I go to the three column, four. Uh, I play the symbols. That's a down triangle. We're at Yankee Stadium. As you can see, I rolled, I play ballpark weather effects. It was uh, rolled as average before the game. So right now it's a one to seven. So if you see there, you see how it says seven slash seven, that would be lefty righty, 1916 lefty righty for home runs. Um, and then the first column, the first is single. So it's one to seven. I'm going to roll. I roll. And as you can see, a four was rolled. Wow. Derek Jeter hit a single, one base. Anytime it's a, um, a ballpark single, it's a single one. So in this case, Russell Martin does not score, but it's in play. There was no out. I'm going to hit single for Jeter. Where did it get to? What I like to do is I, I like to use the, you see how it's a single right field, so I would put right field. But in this case, it was a ballpark. So it, I just put anywhere in the, in the outfield. It was medium uh, a line drive out there. I hit next. So what happened to Russell Martin on the play? It was a single one. So he advances to third on the play. But Derek Jeter, he held up because it was only a one base. So currently, we have two outs, 4-1 game, bottom two. Derek Jeter's on first. Russell Martin is at, at third. Two outs. Robinson Cano is now at the, at the plate. First at bat, he was one for one with a single, and that's where he hit it to. I think it was a medium uh, uh, line, line drive. Sean Dunstan ended up uh, picking it up and, and sending it in. So right now we got two outs, Russell on third, Derek Jeter on first base, and Mr. Cano is on is in, this, in the box. So right now we're going to roll the dice. Remember, men on base, re-roll this. With this, no men on base, I only roll this. Men on base, I roll it all. I come over, I roll. Ah, it was. I have a rule that if it does not land inside the dice tray, it has to be re-rolled over. So if it lands on the table, if it lands on the floor, have to re-roll everything. It has to get inside the dice tray. This is my own rule. Um, it works for me. Um, now, there has been times where it hits the table. And all of a sudden, it bounced in. This has happened several times. As if it everything lands inside the dice tray, it's a it's an official at bat. But in this case, it went out of the box, uh, out of the case. So I got to roll everything for the at bat. Okay, now this is official. There's a three. Only a one or a two on the twenty sided die would be a pass ball, balk, or a wild pitch. So I go to the other dice. Black is the the column it's a one five and a four is a nine so it's a one nine cano against righty it is a ground ball c 
for an out. There was two outs, so that means it's going to end the inning. I'm going to go and put out this time for Cano. I'm going to say ground out. It was a ground ball to the second base. So I'm going to say it was a hard ground ball to the second baseman. Second baseman is a 4-3 I hit done. And there you go. Next inning, zero outs, top of the third. Right? 4-9 game, 4-1 game. And now Mark McGuire is up against CeCe Sabathia. And that's showing who's up to bat. All right, guys. So I know this is a 20-minute video. I wanted to show you a really quick video uh, because I will be doing some tutorial uh, um, videos. There are some super advanced um, videos on there, out there. But a lot of them has to do with basic or advanced. I wanted to get into my max rules and what I do with some of my house rules and things like that um, and show the world you know, what a game can be like uh, with using different rules other than what Stratomatic puts out. Stratomatic is fantastic. Um, I, you know, and talking with them, I made them aware, you know, I, I added some rules and, and they know that they know we do. Um, I try to do it as realistic as possible. I want to play this like I'm sitting in the stadium and I'm managing. So I added some rules just to get as, you know, it is a board game. You got to remember we're rolling dice. This is a board game. You know, we're not sitting actually watching Robinson Cano at the plate. We have to pretend like we are. So there are rules that i have added just to try to get realism uh there's another rule that i put in for for uh wild pitches and pass balls that is not in stratomatics um you know rule set uh, i added where i i took into consideration what the runner would be thinking when the ball gets away you know like you see the batter he'll be telling him to go to second base or moving advancing or he'll tell him to stop you know, the, the, the runner's looking over at the catcher, seeing what he's doing. Does he see the ball? And I made a rule for that where you roll dice. And, and it comes up once in a blue moon because the dice will be rolled and it comes up. But um, it, it just brings out a little bit more realism to the game. And that's what I like. Um, I know some of you probably basic and advanced players right now are probably saying, wow, that's so much information and you, you're taking it. But remember, as you play and get used to it, I, I can play a game by myself. I'm going to be honest. I can play a game in 35 minutes, 30 minutes and because I'm rolling and I'm, I'm playing hard. But then sometimes it may take me two hours because I think on each at bat, I take my time. I'm not here. I'm not in a rush. So I like to, you know, watch, it's like I'm watching a game on TV. So if it takes me two and a half hours for me, gentlemen and ladies, um, that's good for me. Um, a lot of people don't want to, they want to get in three, four, five games in a session, in a night or in a day. Um, I'm just looking to have the best fun I possibly can um, to try to bring out the, the realism. I, I, I want to have this as, as, as real as possible for me. Um, so... I will leave you with this um, to give you some more information. I only play seven-game World Series when I play by myself. I don't have time to play 162-game seasons. Um, I play seven-game series. I grab two teams. As you can see, the 2,000 Cardinals versus the, the 11 Yankees. I have crazy amount of teams like everybody else. And, and I don't want to be um, confined, oh, 162 games. I, I got to go to work. I got kids. So I know I can get in a seven-game series with two teams and have stats on here and everything else. Of course, I score is the best, in my opinion. If you don't want to write it down, I do love writing, you know, taking score on a pad. But when you can just plug this in, and, you know, I have a, a, a friend of mine that actually is like, oh, I hate, uh, you know, I score. But, you know, because he likes writing it down. Uh, but it gets so easy. The, the most part is putting in these names for the team. But once you put them in for the 27 players, it doesn't take that long. Now I have everything here. I can now email myself uh, scorecards and keep stats. And it keeps stats, you know, on what they did for the series and everything. 
Um, so again, guys, I, I know I was talking a little bit fast because I didn't want to... Look, it's already at 25 minutes for the video. So um, this is just a, a, a little bit of a taste on what I do um, to each their own on how they play. Um, to be honest, you, you see how everything was happening, but I'm serious that I can sit here and the things that happen on, let's say, right at this moment, this takes five seconds for me because I'm so used to playing and having the rules where someone who doesn't know, it may take a minute or two between each at bat because you're trying to focus on everything. Um, so I don't want anybody to be, and I'm, I don't want to use the word scared. I mean, it's a board game. But, you know, to like say, wow, I, I, I don't want to touch this. I don't want to get involved in this. I just want to roll and just get ground balls and hits and outs. That's great. That's great for you. Um, but I, my, my, for me, trying to get the realism out of this whole thing statistically with the dice and everything else, I, I cannot play any other way. Um, I can never go backwards in this case because I'm so used to this. Um, but I'm, I'm so happy with, with, I wish there was just more players around me that would get into this. Um, but I, I hope everybody out there is doing their thing. Uh, you play how you want. You know, I watch everybody else's videos and I'm always in tuned, you know, and even if it's basic, I just like looking at, you know, seeing Stratomatic be played. I mean, it's one of the greatest companies in the world. And, um, and that's it, gentlemen. So if you have anybody has any questions, I will post some more videos um, on how I play. And maybe some guys want, I may get into the charts. I may get into how I set things up. You know, oh, someone's going to ask me, where do you get those? Where'd you get this from? You know, where'd you get the 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 the, the, the boards in the back? You know, and uh, but I'll post some videos and even get into maybe some high score on how things are. And um, again, sorry for talking so fast. I just wanted to do a quick video. And here I am almost, almost 30 minutes later. So uh, that's an inning for me. Um, and I look forward to the next video. I hope everybody's having a great day. Happy Friday. Quez World TV. We're getting out of here. Talk to you soon.